Welcome to the Air Gun Show, the fortnightly programme for air gun shooters. This week I'm reviewing the super adjustable, ultra accurate Air Arms Ultimate Sporter, but first it's down to the farm where the rats are running riot. This farm's got a real problem with rats. Now, rats being nocturnal creatures, I tend to shoot them at night, either with a lamp or night vision. It's far more productive than daytime shooting. Purpose of today really is to come here, have a recce, work out where the rats are, work out where and how I can take safe shots, and just get the lie of the land, and also identify any hazards that, that might pose a danger to me when I'm here shooting after dark. That said, the farmer says he sees quite a few rats around during the daytime. Um, and he actually told me to bring the gun along during today's visit, so we'll see how we get on, and if we spot a few, we might even get a few shots. Looking round, I think the reason they've got problems with rats here is because the farm is flanked by this stream. Riverbeds are used like highways by rats. You'll, you'll always have rats coursing up and down uh, riverbanks. Therefore, we can thin them out by shooting a few. The farmer can very well bait them and poison them and keep numbers down that way but uh, with this connection here there's always going to be a trickle of rats coming and going to and from the farm. Also the feed stores are literally just the opposite side of the track from this stream so they've got their highway here, they've got habitat in the bank and they've got food on the farm so it suits rats, it's absolute ideal rat habitat here. Well. Here's one of those ratty highways. We've been having a nose along the bank and it's riddled with rat holes. They've got runs coming out of them straight across the track into the barn where the rats are feeding. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if we saw one or two rats emerging from here later on. It's certainly an area worth targeting. There's certainly a lot of rats here and we soon find more evidence of the damage they're causing around the farm. Well. This is what they're feeding on, just across the way from the stream. There's a large barn here, huge feed store. The grain is literally food on tap for the rats, so it's no wonder they like it here. Also, you've got bales here. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there were rats nesting in this stuff. Just looking around at the grain, there are little ratty footprints and there are droppings in here too. Now, apart from the fact that the rats are eating this grain, which is obviously costing the farmer, there's also a disease risk. Rats are urinating practically all the time, marking their territory. And looking around here, they're also defecating all over the place. Now, the disease risk, obviously, to farm workers is considerable. Rats are notorious for carrying vials disease, which can be fatal. So, from that point of view, a pest control here is a very important job. But this isn't a smoothie. What I've got here is some bait that I've made to keep the rats still. Uh, Stopping rats with an air rifle tends to take headshots, but they're, they're twitchy creatures and it's difficult to get them to keep still long enough for you to get a bead on their heads. So what I've got here is liquidised sweet corn and I've liquidised it to make it into a soup. So rather than grabbing chunks and running away, the rats actually have to stop and lap it up, which then gives me time to take aim and hopefully shoot them. Uh, I also use liquidised cat food, that's another great bait, really smelly, great for attracting and stopping rats. But the problem here is that we've noticed there's a farm cat prowling around and I don't want that mopping up my rat bait, so fingers crossed the liquidised uh, sweet corn will do the trick. And with the recce complete, all I need to do is select my bait points. Okay, so we, we've seen a couple of rats moving and we've seen what looks like some quite busy runs, so what I'm going to do is put splodges of the bait along the runs, outside of rat holes, just areas where I think they're going to emerge and, and where we should be able to stop them. The great thing about this is that I will then be able to gauge the ranges to the bait spots and work out holdover or holdover for the, for the shots because I then know that those points are specific distances from where I'm sat. It also means that I can choose areas with safe backstops where the rats will hopefully stop and I know my, sh my shots will be safe. It's time to get busy with the bait mixture. I just hope it works. 
The rats on this farm are spoilt when it comes to feeding opportunities. Fingers crossed, they'll find my offering tempting. There are even rat holes in this sand heap here. They've, they've, they've literally set up home in there and there's a heck of a busy run across the top. So this is certainly an area that I'll be earmarking for later on. With even the biggest air gunning tasks, you've got to start somewhere. And I'm setting up in the barn right by the feed store. I've got my shooting seat and my BSA Ultra, all set for some comfy rat control. This looks like a good place to set up. I can cover the, uh, the animal feed stores, probably between 15 and 20 metres away. Plus the areas where I've put out some bait spots which will hopefully stop the rats. Now, great thing about this area is also is that it's safe backstops all the way around. I've either got steel panels or brick walls, so it's a nice safe area for us to shoot. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I've got my trousers tucked in my wellies because we've seen a lot of rats. There are plenty of rats around, but as is often the case during daylight, they're fidgety. But my ruse eventually proves too tempting, and one presents a suitable target by the elevated bait station above the feed. Though I don't want to break out of position, you can't leave animal feed strewn with carcasses, and rats have a habit of dragging their mates' corpses away, so this one's got to go. Then it's back to my vigil. This is a classic air gun pest control situation. A lot of air gun shooters often feel underpowered and, and, and worry about the power levels produced by their air gun. Start thinking about going across to FAC power levels. Now, I love hunting with firearms air rifles, but in a situation like this, you really couldn't use any gun other than a legal limit air gun. The, the low power is a massive advantage. You're in a confined situation, using a gun like this does away with the worries of ricochet, as long as you use safe backstops, it, the air gun just lends itself perfectly to farmyard pest control. Well, that one obviously knew he was safe today. Must be his lucky day. And when the dove clears off, I get a shot at another rat. That's two, Dane. Not a bad start, but only a small dent in this rat infestation. I thought I'd hit it hard. This location is proving fruitful, so I decide to stay put. And the longer I sit in wait, the more chances I get. Four dead rats is no bad result for a daytime ratting session, but it looks like I have quite a bit more to do before the farmer's happy. The pests are as visible as ever, even showing themselves as I'm retrieving this one. But there's no sense in worrying. All I can do is clear up the problem in a professional manner. This was meant to be just a quick recce, but with so much shooting to be had, I'm finding it hard to leave. Well, this recce's certainly going well. We've been here about an hour and a half, and we've already got five rats nailed, so brilliant. It's been a long time since I can recall seeing this many rats moving during daylight. Um, I just think we'd have a field day here after dark with night vision or lamping kit, 
but uh, I'm going to stick around and give it another hour or so and see if we can bag a few more. The ratty crack dang continues on that farm and I'll be back again soon. And now it's over to the Air Gun Show News. This is the Air Gun Show News with a special report from the CLA Game Fair at Blenheim Palace. The latest must have gear was on show in the Air Gun Experience Arena, hosted by the Air Gun Manufacturers and Trade Association and showgoers were able to try a wide range of rifles under the watchful eye of instructors from the ATEO. Hull Cartridge showed off Virox HW100 with a new laminate stock. The woodwork's subtle blend of browns and greys will look classy on the HFT range, while offering a breakup effect that's bound to go down well with hunters. It's a new stock, it's a new design for the UK market. We decided to bring this out because of the HFT market and predominantly people like a, a bit of difference. Um, it's a unique colour, I don't think I've seen another laminate like it out there. Um, it's got a very grippy thumb hole here. It's a thumb hole stock only, available in full rifle length and carbine length. Um, but obviously you can hunt with it as well due to the subtle nature of the colours. Equally eye-catching was the stock on the Scorpion SE shot by BSA HFT captain Roger Late. The super adjustable handle is set to feature on a new BSA air gun designed especially for HFT. The gun maker is tight lipped about the unnamed gun due to be launched later this year, but says it will feature a single shot regulated action. It's a prototype at the moment. They've gone into the target market or they're looking at the target market. The reason this is different from a normal Scorpion HFT gun or HFT gun is it has an adjustable cheek piece that's forward and backwards, up and down and laterally. The butt pad is up and down as well, left and right. What I like the best about this HFT gun is the fact that the hamster is multi-adjustable, forwards and backwards and up and down. For HFT, it's the perfect gun. Sticking with BSA, a natty range of retro t-shirts sporting the gunmaker's iconic brand caused a stir on the Ronnie Sunshine stand. Air gunners may be partial to tree print camo, but these cool tees were the perfect attire for the sultry show weather. From daywear to hardware, Armex MD Alan Phelps told us that the Walter Rotex R8 is now rolling into gun shops. Although Armex couldn't reveal the new 8-shot PCP to the air gunning masses at the fair, they got a fantastic response to the new Walter LGU underlever. The fixed barrel springer was such a hit with visitors that we had to wait half an hour just to prise it away from them. We have back orders from all over the UK. We have enquiries from all over the world, which obviously we won't fulfil. The UK is our market and so far, total success, total satisfaction, build quality beyond belief. Not just for the money, as I say, three, four, nine, ninety-nine retail, but for any gun. The first production model of Webley's Mark VI revolver drew the crowds to the Highland Outdoor Stand. The CO2-powered air pistol is styled exactly to the original gun's specifications, save for the safety switch on the right-hand side. It operates exactly the same as the original. You have dummy rounds which you place a BB in the front, place them in, a CO2 canister into, under the grip and it fires single and double action. We've had a lot of really, really positive response for this. The six shooter is expected to retail at around £180 and should be in the shops just in time for Christmas. Another mean looking air gun, the Crosman MSR 77, was causing a stir on the ASI stand. Many of you will uh, look at this and recognise uh, an M16 look-alike. It's the new tactical look which is all rage. We've had a lot of interest in this at the, uh, at the game fair. 
Um, it's a standard brake barrel action concealed inside here. Uh, and of course, the powerhouse in here is the already well proven Crosman Micro Piston powerhouse. So smooth to cock, very, very consistent indeed. Um, and it comes with a 4x32 scope and mounts. We were delighted to get a sneak peek at the Pulsar Apex HG38S thermal rifle scope on the Scott Country stand. It's the first thermal imaging uh, rifle scope on the market from Pulsar. It's available from Scott Country um, around October time. It's a retail price of £4,000. It has a detection range of up to 950 metres, switchable between black hot and white hot, and there's nothing on the planet that will come close to detection in this. The ATN Excite Digital Rifle Scope offers a more affordable NV option and can also be used as a day scope. The 3 to 9 model retails at £650. Good old lamplight is still as effective as it ever was, and the Innovatech Rangemaster has just got better thanks to a new collimator head. This is an accessory that quite simply adds on and replaces the reflector. And what this does is to collimate the beam, which is to project the beam of light rather than reflect the beam of light. You can get some exceptional distances with this, and we also have screwing filters. So this allows you quite simply to screw the filter on, and hey presto, there you have your yellow light. Another nifty accessory grabbing attention at the show was the POA green airgun laser sight on the shooting party stand. Green lasers historically have been significantly more expensive than red lasers and I've never fully appreciated why. But if you go to our website you'll be able to get the full technical detail but it's basically involves a lot more electronics and several diodes. But what it does do, the green laser will give you 50 meters of visibility in daylight and up to 2,600 meters of visibility at night. A great to use with all kinds of pistols, providing fantastic rapid target acquisition and we, we very successfully sell them to um, shooters who are looking to do such things as ratting in bonds and that kind of thing. The whole kit retails at $49.99 and it literally ready to go out of box. There was a lot of noise on the air arm stand, but not from their new Q-Tech silencer. Initially designed for the ultimate sporter, this slinky suppressor is calibre specific and fits most models of airgun. It is about seven and a half decibels quieter than what's out there. Um, for the human ear, it's an audible tone that will definitely be noticeable. This is a dedicated 2 2 silencer that I have in my hand, but if you have a 177, you need to get that one for the gun. If you have a 25, again, same for that. It has a new baffling system inside it, which I can't talk too much about because I don't want to give too much away. And we also have additional silencing material in the back to enhance the silencing of it. Game Fair stalwart Basque offers an excellent membership package for air gun shooters. David Ilsley urged air gunners to get in touch and let them know how they can make it even better. We formed a fantastic partnership with BSA, one of the longest and well established air gun manufacturers in the UK. That is really, really exciting. We're going to look to open up more training opportunities for air gunners, more shooting opportunities for air gunners. We want to see more films being made about air gunning. Lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff. And you're going to see more happening in, 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 in the BSC magazine. So we want to deliver something for air gunners, but at the same time, we want air gunners to tell us, what do you want from us? So just get in touch, tell us, and we'll work with you. That was the Air Gun Show News. This is an interesting take on the Air Arms S510. The Ultimate Sporter variant comes with this very eye-catching, ultra-adjustable, ambidextrous stock, a spare magazine, an accessory rail, and Air Arms' new calibre-specific silencer. So it's quite a package. I think it's fair to say that the, uh, the laminate stock is definitely the most striking feature of this gun. Now, although the layered finish probably won't be to everybody's taste, it serves a purpose in terms of breaking up the outline. The muted browns and greys are definitely going to help with camouflage hunting situation in the woods for certain. I think that would make a big difference. And the anti-glare finish, it's not a gun that's going to glint and reflect and catch your quarry's eye. So apart from it being eye-catching from a shooter's point of view, I think that will improve concealment in a hunting situation.
You can't help but notice the potential for adjustment around the cheek piece and butt of the gun. If you slacken this screw, the cheek piece moves up and down and you can lock it wherever you want it in that access for alignment with the scope. If you take this screw right out, the cheek piece lifts out and there's a plate within there, further movement once the screws on that are slackened and you can slide the cheek piece back and forth in and out on that too. Furthermore, there are two screws accessed through these inlets, slacken those and the cheek piece rolls on a ball joint and that gives you potential for literally infinite adjustment. So lots of permutations on the cheek piece set up there. If you loosen this screw at the back of the butt plate, the plate slides up and down, giving you adjustment for shoulder height there. If you take the screw out and remove the plate, there are four millimeter spacers that you can add, and that increases the length of pull. There's a generous gap between the, the pistol grip and the cheek piece, and that gives a really comfortable space for your thumb muscle, which you don't always get with ambidextrous stocks. So I particularly like that. There's really good stippling all around the pistol grip and there's some at the fore end too. But to be honest with you, I think the stippling on the fore end is set a little bit too far back to be of use to most shooters. Fortunately, there are these very comfortable finger grooves which do really aid grip and support. The stock also features a sliding accessory rail just under the fore end, which I think will be really appreciated by hunters who like to use a bipod. Uh, you don't need to mess about with the screwdriver fitting your stud, it's already there. Uh, the stud slides back and forth within the 190 millimeter rail. So there's a lot of adjustment there. And that means you can get balance just right. There's also a stud in the back end underneath the butt end to fit a sling. The metal work really is impeccable and uh, the anti-glare finish of the barrel shroud really does suit the, the semi-matte finish of the stock. The chunky new air arms caliber specific silencer looks the business and also does a great job of muting down muzzle crack just to an absolute whisper. Engineering throughout really is just what you'd expect from air arms, it's excellent. To load the magazine, you draw back the side lever, pull the 10 shot magazine out from the side. The familiar yellow plate, the transparent plate on the back of the mag has now been replaced with a grey one. And as I mentioned earlier, you get a spare magazine as part of the package. It's very easy to load up, pellets literally drop in, and because there's no spring to work against, it doesn't spring back if you let it go. Once it's loaded, pop it back in, return the side lever, and the gun's loaded and cocked and ready to fire. Another quick word on the, uh, the side lever action. The side lever is infinitely better. It's very slick, very smooth, absolutely reliable every time. The manual safety catch is located within the trigger blade. And to be honest, it's a setup that I don't particularly like. I don't like the thought of having to fumble around the trigger when you're trying to make a gun safe. However, to make it safe, you push the pin in from the left and to make the gun ready to fire, you just pop the button back in from the right hand side and it's ready to go. Safety button accepted. It is a very good match quality trigger. Two stage. The first stage comes to a distinct stop and then it's a very short travel to a very crisp, predictable let off in the second stage. It is adjustable, but to be honest with you, these triggers come out of the factory set very well. I know from experience that tinkering tends to do more harm than good, so I've left this one as it came. I can't really fault that for a five shot group. 25 meters with 4.52 millimeter air arms Diablo field pellets, which seem to suit this gun an absolute treat. Well, the circle there is about 10 millimeters across, and I'd say that's probably roughly what the size of the group is, so can't fault that for performance. It's certainly a very accurate gun. Now that's due to a combination of factors. Obviously, all of the adjustability that gives you that terrific fit, the well-engineered internals, and the match grade barrel it's not difficult to see why target shooters are such fans of air arms guns. It weighs in at just over three and a half kilos unscoped, and that's a gun that most shooters are going to be able to manage. It's the sort of gun you can carry around the shoot all day. It measures in at a shade over a meter, so it's a fairly compact gun. It'll handle well in the confines of a hide or around farm buildings. I'm not sure about the Ultimate Sporter label. To be honest with you, with that very square fore end, 
and all the adjustment, it looks a lot like a target rifle. But then, great stock fit makes for accurate shooting, and that counts for a lot in the hunting field too. So it should probably be called the ultimate all-rounder. Price tag? £892 is quite an outlay and that pits this gun against some stiff competition. But then again, it's a very impressive package and the stock fit that you can achieve once you've made the most of all that adjustment really does have to be felt to be believed. It is a great little gun. That's it for this week, but I'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.